Hello, I'm Alan Holtham. Welcome to this Buyer's Guide to the Bandsaw. In it, I'm going to show you all the important points to look for when you're thinking of buying a machine. And also, I'm going to show you around the record power range of bandsaws. In there, there's a machine for everybody, from the hobbyist right through to the professional user. Now to me, the bandsaw is the most useful machine you'll have. If I had to get rid of all my machines, the one that would remain in my workshop would always be the bandsaw. You can rip with it, making long cuts down the grain. You can cross cut with it, snipping the end off boards, or even making joints. You can tilt the table, cutting bevels. You can use a mitre guide for cutting angles. You can cut really thick material. And also, you can cut really thin material. You can even cut veneers. Don't forget, the bandsaw will also cut non-ferrous metals. as well as plastics and resins such as corian. And of course, it'll do what the bandsaw does best, cutting curves and profiles. And all this on a machine that takes up minimal space in your workshop. The bandsaw has several safety advantages as well. Of course, no machine that has a cutting blade is totally safe. But if you think about a bandsaw, all the forces are pressing down on the table. On a virtually any other woodworking machine, you actually push a piece of wood into a cutter block that's revolving towards you. So there is the potential for the wood being kicked back at you. On a bandsaw, the blade pushes the wood down on the table rather than back towards you. And of course, it's much quieter and even a relative beginner feels quite confident putting a hand quite close to the blade. You'd never do that on, say, a circular saw. But do think about safety, though, at all times, and take care when you are using a bandsaw. Whenever you buy a machine, the temptation is always to buy the smallest you can get away with, and also probably the cheapest as well. You must avoid that temptation when you're buying a bandsaw, because it is so amazingly versatile. You can do so much with it, as we've already seen. Don't buy a machine with an inferior capacity or a poor quality one. Hopefully, this buyer's guide will help you choose just the right machine for you. But always bear in mind, try and buy a bit of extra capacity as well. A bandsaw will appeal to all woodworkers. If you're a wood turner, you can use it for cutting blanks and converting your own timber. For this, you need a machine that will take and track a narrow blade for radius cutting and give you plenty of support from the table with good guides to counter the side pressures involved when you are profile cutting. But you also need to be able to fit a wider blade for the conversion work. Cabinet makers can use a bandsaw for cutting shapes, but more importantly probably for resawing, cutting tenons and cutting veneers. So they need the ability to take a wider blade with a good solid fence and plenty of motor power. The actual construction of the bandsaw obviously has a major bearing on its performance, its accuracy and its reliability. So let's have a look at the major points you need to consider when you're buying a machine. If I open up the doors, you can see straight away that this is a two wheel machine. We've got a top wheel here and a bottom wheel underneath the table. Another safety point is these micro switches on the doors. If you open these doors when the machine is running, the machine will cut out important safety feature. Now, the frame is probably the most important thing to look for. 
needs to be really strong and really rigid. If you think about a bandsaw when it's running, there are a lot of different forces involved. When you tension up the blade, a lot of static forces trying to squeeze the frame together. When the machine is running, there's dynamic forces. The wheels are whizzing around. It can induce a lot of vibration. So you want a really strong and really rigid frame. On the cheaper machines, you find this is just a standard box section with thin, flimsy metal bandsaw boxes welded on the side. On the record machine, we've got heavy, thick gauge pressed steel. That makes it so strong. Need to look at the wheels as well. These can either be spoked or they can be solid. They need to be really thick and heavy again. These are all cast iron and that makes it much smoother to operate when you're cutting with a machine because you get the flywheel effect. The wheels need to be balanced. They need to be dynamically balanced preferably. Sometimes see them drilled or with little weights on the side. That again makes them run smoothly. The tyres need to be thick. You want a thick rubber tyre on here. On the record machine, they are ground with a crown on them. That will help you track them and help again cut really accurately. Have a good look at the hub bearing as well. This needs to be plenty big enough, it needs to be good quality and needs to be sealed for life. All these little things make a great deal of difference to how the machine actually cuts. You also need to look carefully at the tension mechanism. This wheel raises and lowers with this knob here and this is what tensions the blade. It pulls the blade tight. Now if we put a wide blade on, you can actually apply up to 25,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. It's a huge amount of pressure. So this mechanism needs to be really strong to cope with that. If you look on this one, you can see we've got good quality metal slides and really strong springs. A lot of the cheaper bandsaws have very thin pressings and very weak springs. You can never apply enough pressure to get a wide blade to cut straight, particularly when you're ripping. So that is important. The tension is applied with this knob on the top. Just turning the knob raises this top wheel, stretches the blade and applies the tension. And you can see we have a little tension indicator here to give you some idea of the tension you've applied. Now, every time you need to change a blade, obviously you have to release the tension by winding that down, lowering the wheel, taking the blade off, replacing it, and then reapplying tension by turning the knob up again. That takes quite a bit of time. Some of the better quality machines have what they call a cam lock. This is a lever on the back. If I just release the lever, you can see the wheel moves down in one smooth movement, releases the tension. I can replace the blade very quickly, just reapply the tension with a cam lock at the back. It's as quick as that to change a blade. The other important thing as regards the blade running is the tracking. On the back here, we have another control that tilts this top wheel. By turning that knob, I can tilt this top wheel backwards and forwards and that allows me to position where this blade is running on this wheel. Remember I said the better quality machine have a crowned wheel. We want to run the blade somewhere near the middle. By turning the tracking control I can do that. But the tracking control needs to be very fine adjustment. So you want a nice fine thread on that. You also need to make sure you can lock it up securely as well once you set the tracking. Then have a good look at the table. You can see on these machines, it's ground to a mirror finish. This is super smooth and allow you to move the timber easily on the table. On some of the poorer quality machines, you find this is just either a scrape finish or a very rough ground surface. It makes moving the timber about much more difficult. A super smooth finish like this is what you're looking for. You also want a table that's plenty big enough. Don't forget you're going to be dealing with quite big pieces of timber, so you want loads of support, so a nice big table. And of course, this is all solid cast iron. Aluminium tables are easily distorted when you start dropping big pieces of timber onto it. Fence is also critical as well. Use a bandsaw for a lot of ripping work, so the fence needs to be really strong. Just look at this. Solid chrome bar, really rigid fixings onto the table, and easily movable. Again, the cheaper ones are much more difficult to move about. They don't lock up securely, or when they do lock, they move at this end. You want a really solid fence. This one has a really deep extrusion as the main part of the fence. That's great for ripping and resawing work. You can also turn it 90 degrees and use it in the lower position when you're dealing with thinner pieces of material. Look at the table. It needs to have a mitre guide in it. This is the mitre guide. This allows you to cut angles. 
I must say, if you want really precise angles, a mitre guide and a bandsaw probably isn't the machine for the job. You want a proper mitre saw. But for cutting basic angles, or using it as a carrier for jigs or cutting tenons, for instance, a mitre guide is a really useful feature. This one has two slots, so I can put the mitre guide this side of the blade or onto this side of the blade. Now, with cutting bevels, it's great to be able to tilt the table. And another important thing is to look how the table is mounted on the bandsaw. If you come over here, you can have a look. I've got another machine with a table tilted. You can see we have massive cast trunnions here supporting the table. You want something that is really rigid, really firm. This couldn't be better. And because it's mounted independently onto this plate here on top of the bandsaw box, you can adjust it to all sorts of movements you can get in it to make sure the blade is running true to the table and to the fence. Look how easy it is to tilt. These trunnions with a rack and pinion, just turn the handle and I can tilt it to whatever angle I want. There's a little scale engraved on there as well. This makes cutting bevels so much easier. The next feature is the blade guides. Now these are vital for accurate cutting. On these machines you can see we've got industrial quality roller guides, one either side of the blade and one at the back to take the thrust. You can see the whole blade is well guarded as well. If you come across this machine you can see all that a little bit clearer. You can see the guides are on screw adjustments so I can wind them in and out to get them adjusted just clear of the blade. The thrust roller is adjusted on the allen key here and then the whole guide assembly can be moved up and down on this rack and pinion mechanism so I can position it just clear of the work. So if I'm doing a deep cut I can wind it up, if I'm doing a shallow cut I can wind it right down and then just lock it up tight with a locking knob there. And for total accuracy there's a similar guide system below the table as well. Wood cutting bandsaws are either single speed or more often than not two speed machines. Now for most wood cutting applications all you actually need is a single speed around about 800 meters a minute. Just occasionally though, it is handy to be able to reduce the speed for cutting, say, non-ferrous metals or plastics. On this machine, we've got a two-step pulley. To change the speed, all I have to do is slacken off this idler wheel here by turning the handle. That releases the tension on the drive belt there. I can slip the belt across onto the other pulley and then retention, and we're ready to go. So speed changing is actually very simple. Look carefully at the specifications of different bandsaws when you're buying a machine. Some manufacturers will quote you input power rather than output power, and there is quite a difference. You want at least three-quarter horsepower output on a machine of this size. Although they're quite big motors, they do still run quite happily off a normal domestic 13-amp supply. While we're down here, have a look also at the dust extraction. We're all becoming more and more aware of the problems of fine dust and a bandsaw does tend to generate quite a bit of dust and the action of the wheels tends to blow it everywhere all over the workshop. So if you connect up to a small canister type extractor, something like this, they're very inexpensive to buy, makes a really good job of extracting that fine dust and keeping the workshop a much healthier environment to work in. For moving the bandsaw about the workshop, some form of wheelbase is a real asset. This one has a big pedal here as you can see all I have to do is press down that lifts the machine up it locks in place and now I can easily move it about the workshop as well as allowing me to push this in a corner and get it out of the way I can also angle it if I need to point a long workpiece out of a convenient door or window when it's in the right place I just release the tension drop it down and the whole machine is rock solid to get the best out of your bandsaw, it's essential you fit it with a really good quality blade. That's so important. Record power bandsaw blades are manufactured to fine tolerance from a high carbon steel strip. This results in a blade with harder teeth that cut straighter and lasts a lot longer than many other makes. Now when you're choosing a blade, it can be a little bit confusing. There's all sorts of different widths available, different tooth patterns. Generally, the tighter the curve you want to cut, the narrower the blade has to be. If you're cutting long, straight, ripping cuts, you want a wider blade. Now, if you're cutting thin material or very hard material, you want a finer tooth blade as well, maybe 6, 10, maybe even 14 teeth per inch. However, if this is all too confusing, for general purpose work, majority work, you'll find you'll cut with one single blade, a 3 8 6 TPI blade. 
something like this one fit in the machine here. That will do virtually everything, saves having to change it too often. But do remember, blades are a consumable item. They don't last forever, particularly if you're cutting hard or abrasive materials. So do change them on a regular basis. I hope you've enjoyed this programme and it's given you some ideas of what to look for when you're choosing your own bandsaw. I think it's probably time you treated yourself. Don't forget, we've produced a Masterclass DVD showing you how to set up and use the bandsaw after you've bought it. And this is available from your record power stockist. I'm Al Holtham. This has been a Record Power production.